Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back, Ellen here with Droid Life. And today we're taking a look at Android O. That's right, Android O is out. It's official, well, it's official as a first developer preview. So you're probably not gonna wanna flash this. But anyway, there's some new stuff in there that we certainly want to talk about. So let's dive into this as quickly as we, as we possibly can. This is what's new in Android O. All right, so what exactly is new? Well, before we get into that, just know that this Android O preview one is available if you want to use it, though Google is certainly not recommending anyone use this for their sort of daily phone or everyday phone, but it is available for 6P, Nexus 5X, Pixel, Pixel XL, Pixel C, and Nexus Player. But again, you've been warned, don't necessarily jump on this. You'll find links and all that stuff down below. Um, as for what's new, though, it's kind of a boring update if I'm, if I'm being honest, although this obviously could change and these things will get better and hopefully more features will arrive over time time potentially uh, but we've got things like background limits so Google's focusing on battery life so they're gonna limit the use of applications in the background going forward those are the the basics of it but basically they're going to do that start limiting the use of apps and kill off tasks and things like that that aren't doing what they should be doing in order to um, extend the battery life of your phone you also find new notification channels where a notification can essentially have channels for the different types of notifications it sends you and then you can sort of control how those work so it's like you have have control or more control and developers have more control of how their notifications show up. Uh, you for an example would be you could be allowed to have a notification channel for a specific group conversation, if that makes sense within an app. I know that's kind of crazy, but that's sort of the idea of what we're getting to here. There's an autofill API now. So if you're using LastPass or say a password manager, um, that's now essentially a system level support item. So you would select your specific app. Think of like Android Pay, how you can choose Android Pay or a different payment app or something like that. Uh, that's how autofill is now going to work. So you could toggle between LastPass and Dashlane or something like that in order to allow it to better fill um, your app. Now we do have picture in picture for phones now. So picture in picture means if you're watching YouTube, you could have a little YouTube video up in one corner um, and continue doing stuff else in the background. Uh, that's been on uh, Android TV units. It's now coming to phones. We have adaptive icons, which are icons that sort of adjust depending on the shape, size, or whatever um, a theme is working towards. So you could have circle icons and you could build icons that adjust to being circles and then ones that automatically adjust to being a squircle, for example. And they also animate and things like that depending on the system. We have better connectivity support in terms of high quality Bluetooth audio codecs and things like that. There's better keyboard navigation with physical keyboards because Android apps run on Chrome OS now and you use a physical keyboard to do that. So there's some changes out there, although it's tough to show you a lot of these, but we will do our best right now. All right, so we'll flip this guy over here and start first with notifications. Notifications are obviously the hub of Android and sort of how everything works. So if we swipe these down, um, you'll see I've got some stuff here. Now, you can long press on these to get into um, what should be defined eventually as your app categories. Now, it looks like apps are going to have to build all this stuff out. So right now, it just is a toggle for notifications. You can turn that off or on, but it should eventually show what the categories are and if there's other apps associated with your category and things like that. We're getting pretty deep in terms of customization, but Google thinks you want to do that. So you can also jump into more settings and then that takes you into an even greater detail over app settings, or I should say notification control. So you could say block and show badge and um, it should tell you, I would imagine what categories you are, which are listed um, down here. And at this time it just says miscellaneous because they aren't built out. But so you can tap that and get into even more controls. Now, some of this stuff has been around, but you'll just see that that's sort of the idea here is you can control everything. And then Google's giving developers the potential potential to build out channels and things like that to give you just ultimate customization. Uh, one thing I did want to show you though, is if you swipe this way, so you've always been able to swipe this way since about nougat and that gets you into some settings, but you'll notice this little guy right here. Let me just get a little closer. So you do see that. Yes, that is what you think it is. It is a snooze button. So there is an option to snooze notifications now. And if you drop that down, you can do 15, 30 minutes, one hour, or just don't snooze, whatever you want. But I can do 15 minutes and that notification should show back up in 15 minutes. This is like the probably the best feature I've seen added on here. Uh, anyways, let's go back home here. I just have Google Now Launcher up here on this Nexus 6B. But if we swipe this back down um, and go up into this area, some things have changed as well. So you notice up top, um, 
for one, if I if I'm here, I've got notification icons, you've got your system um, sort of status bar icons as well. But now when I swipe down, those all stay. So in previous builds, um, you didn't have Wi Fi and all this stuff sort of swipe down with you there. And now it shows including battery percentage, um, you also have the date right there instead of one extra swipe down like it is on the pixel device. Um, if we swipe down again, though, this stuff's changed a little bit. So we've returned to separating the icon from the name of whatever is there or the text involved with that icon there's now a line back and so you can tap on the icon up top and that will actually toggle whatever off and on um, or you can tap on the name right below it or the text there and that brings you into sort of this miniature ui um, or there is a third option which is just long press on the whole thing and that takes you in here so we, we've added an extra step essentially in the previous builds it was tap once would get you into that UI or turn things off and on long press would get you into wherever else you want to now we've got a third option which is either tap that to turn off or on tap that to get in that UI or long press you guys get where I'm going but you can edit these um, we're not noticing necessarily anything new at the moment um, in terms of just being home if I can tap that button properly this is Google now launch so nothing's really changed in here app switcher um, we still definitely have multi window and that hasn't necessarily changed from what we can tell as well. Um, so we'll swipe that down. Uh, but what has changed for sure are some other things like settings in particular. Um, one thing we'll get into first is ambient display. So ambient display, remember if you tilt your phone up, uh, you'll see it has changed a little bit. Now you got clock up here and all these little mini icons um, for notifications you have. And you also notice it's not just laying out my notifications like they would look on the lock screen like it used to. Um, another thing too is as you toss up here, if I touch this, nothing happens. It doesn't wake the phone or unlock it or anything. So that sort of fixed maybe that in-pocket issue people like me were having. Um, so how you interact with that now is you lift up and you either double tap on the screen and that will wake everything for you or you lift up and you can actually double tap on those little icon there for notifications and that will expand those as well. So just a little change there. Um, let's drop down though and go into settings because things have changed quite a bit in here. In fact, this thing has been completely overhauled. If you've used a Samsung device in recent years, I should say, I guess from the Note 7 now up through um, Nougat on all the Samsung phones, it sort of reminds you of that. It, instead of everything being broken out, everything's now been categorized. So network and internet is up here and if you tap on that you get into your wi-fi and your hotspot tethering and data usage and things like that so that's all combined there um, bluetooth is now in this connected devices section with that which has nfc and beam and things like that um, apps and notifications are sort of their own thing although they have been for a while just the ui looks a little bit different in here um, same thing with battery the ui's changed a little bit you've just got more settings in here and one thing you'll notice down here is screen usage and screen consumption is now its own little section so rather than showing up in here of everything that's been used it's now its own section down here um, to maybe give you better access to what's going on with your screen uh, display again things have changed a little bit in here if we hit this advanced option which you'll see in a number of the settings categories that's where you get some of those other additions like adaptive brightness that ambient display i talked about there's even an option down here for what to do with vr either reduce blur or reduce flicker i believe that's a new setting although you guys can correct me if you want uh sound here more adjustments over sound again there's an advanced option that gets you into some additional sound um, notification or I sh i'm sorry settings there um, your storage ui has changed so you do have a big button to free up space right up front now um, if you manage storage you get into your smart storage and things like that you guys have seen these features before they just look a lot different now but again this ui is quite a bit different here on this front um, in security and screen lock again just the ui has changed here you still have your nexus imprint or pixel imprint or whatever we're calling it device administrators and things like that are in here as well user accounts accessibility has uh, basically all the same stuff you're used to again it just looks different uh, if you jump into system though things do get quite different in here so system uh, you'll notice language and inputs in there the times in there backups in there and even your factory reset is now under system settings category uh, we can tap here on about phone and you'll see this stuff just looks a little bit different but you can still tap on the android version and get in there uh, the easter egg is still the cat game so that hasn't changed we'll turn that off um, you can still tap on build number a whole lot to enable your developer settings you can see i've already done that and developer options do show up in here as well nothing's really changed in there again just the ui looks a little bit different you'll notice the slide out menu is long gone so from nougat we had that slide out menu that when you were in a specific setting you could slide that out and jump into other categories 
they've done away with that. I guess nobody was using it. Um, so let me jump back here and go into a couple other things. So if we go into apps and notifications, there's a section called special access. So in special access, you will see one thing in particular I wanted to point out, which is picture in picture. So picture in picture, which again is watching a little video in a hovered sort of display like you have on Android Nougat on Android TVs. Uh, this is where you're going to control that and whether or not you want video apps to have that specific access. Now I've loaded up YouTube and it doesn't have the option yet, although it does say it is enabled here. Uh, so developers are going to have to build that in and this is where you would give those apps access to doing that. And that was once again in apps notifications. Um, you'll see like default apps has its own section now. And the default apps is where you'll find that autofill. So I actually have LastPass installed, hoping it would show up there. It's not. So LastPass, Dashlane, those password managers, they're actually going to have to um, build that out, and they haven't exactly done that just yet. Uh, so those are just sort of some major overviews. You can see some things have changed, especially your settings. Of course, you can always just search for stuff, which is how I found picture in picture. Um, so you definitely want to take advantage of that search because there are more settings now than I believe we've seen in a long time. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out in system, I do have the system UI tuner turned on down here. And this is just some sort of bonus stuff. So system UI tuner to turn it on, you long press on your gear settings icon up top and you just hold that sucker until it vibrates and sort of blinks at you and then that little wrench icon comes on now we point this out because it typically shows up in these previews and then some of this stuff sticks around most of it goes away but there are some new things this time so you still have status bar and do not disturb options but you'll notice these two options too so navigation bar we've now got some navigation bar customization options so if i do layout you'll you'll notice this right here so i have it on normal but watch as i switch to compact they then shrink in into a more compact setting. I can also push those left or I can push those back to the right. So if you're right-handed, you want to get those closer to your left-handed, you guys get it. So it's kind of cool. They're allowing you to potentially customize that. You can also add some new buttons like your keyboard switcher or a clipboard tool. So now I have a clipboard tool over here on the left. I could then add the keyboard switcher over to the right, which would only show up if I was in a UI where I needed to switch keyboards. In other words, when a keyboard popped up. But anyways, just some new things they're sort of uh, they're sort of adding in there that you can play with. We don't know if those will ever go official, but that is cool that they're allowing you to sort of adjust that stuff. The other thing here is lock screen. So lock screen shortcuts, I've actually tweaked these already, but um, let's go back and show you what these would look like without them. So your normal lock screen looks like this, right? You go down here and you have a mic icon or a camera shortcut. So with this new setting, you can actually change those. So let's say I want Chrome in there and then maybe I want my Wi-Fi setting. So you can actually adjust this to almost anything. So if now I go in here, I do have a Chrome shortcut so I can swipe up and launch Chrome right away or I could swipe up and launch into my Wi-Fi settings or for example, if I wanted to do that. So just a little just a little tweak they're doing there with System UI Tuner. Um, we don't know if those things will stick around but they are there at the moment. Uh, as far as I know, that's pretty much it as far as what I can show you. This new wallpaper though, that is the new Android O wallpaper and it's available on the site if you want to download that. Otherwise, we'll be digging deeper and seeing what else we can find. But that's sort of it for now. If you guys have comments, questions, want to know anything else about Android O, let us know. We're Droid Life. Peace.